Good morning. Welcome to God's House for Worship today. Welcome to everyone joining online today. What a, a joy to be together. Uh, I know we've uh, got everyone filtering in from the excitement of Sunday school this morning. Uh, uh, if, for those of you who uh, haven't been used to our new schedule yet, maybe some of you watching online, we've got worship at 8 and 1045 each week. Uh, 930 is our Sunday school hour, Sunday school Bible study, all of those uh, great things together. So welcome. It's good to be in God's house today. Today we celebrate LWML Sunday, Lutheran Women's Missionary League. Uh, we focus today on the joy of being in God's house, the joy of God giving us a pure heart, a clean heart in Him. And so we gather around that theme of a, a pure heart in God, and we're grateful for everyone being here today. One announcement, our central food ministry is in the midst of uh, gathering things in. Uh, there's a need for clothing right now, of fall and winter clothing, as well as linens for the house and some household items as well. And then also we're beginning our food drive for Thanksgiving to provide Thanksgiving meals for uh, those who come to our central food ministry. So there are bags in the back with a convenient list stapled right on the bag. You can take the bag to the store and purchase the items for that meal, so uh, everything is there. We thank you for the support in that and the, the, uh, the joy of giving back to others, seeing all that God has blessed us with and, and returning to him a portion of it through our gifts and offerings and, and our donations to others as well. Having said those things today, we are so excited for everyone being with us today. Uh, we invite you to follow along in your bulletin, a special order of worship. It's Divine Service Setting 4, but it is a, a special order with the Lutheran Women's Missionary League Sunday. We are blessed to have our praise uh, team with us today, too. so thank you. Uh, it's a joy to be together. So as we begin today, I invite you to stand as we begin with our invocation this morning. God bless you as we gather around God's Word today. Indeed, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Confident of the Lord's presence with us here in his house, we make our beginning in the powerful name of God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together of that powerful love.
We join in prayer. Holy Lord, as we stand in your presence, we are aware of our sins of thought, word, and action. We have not always lived our lives according to your will. We have often failed to live up to your expectations. We all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But we know your promise that if we confess our sins, you will hear our cry and grant us your forgiveness. Hear us now, O Lord, as we confess our failings to you. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Jesus has carried our sins to his own death. His sacrifice is complete and full. It is finished. The victory is won. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servants of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join together in our psalm this morning, Psalm 86. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. There is none like you among the gods, O Lord, nor are there any works like yours. All the nations you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things, you alone are God. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God is indeed our everlasting God. We sing together.
The Heavenly Father, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded, desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we turn our attention to the assigned readings this morning. Our Old Testament lesson for us today is from Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, beginning at verse 22. Therefore say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. And I will vindicate the holiness of my great name which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, declares the Lord God, when through you I vindicate my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my just decrees. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle lesson today is from 1 Peter, the first chapter. We begin at verse 17. This will serve as the basis for the sermon this morning as well. If you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for your sake, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. Since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God, for all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel this morning. It is for us today the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And one of the scribes came up and heard them disputing with one another, and seeing that he answered them well, asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, the most important is hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It's our joy to join together this morning to confess our common faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, <coughs> of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven 
and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. I'd love to invite the children forward for our children's message at this time. Come on up, guys. All right. I'm going to try to talk soft because with my mask on, my microphone's really, really loud. But good morning, guys. I have something to show you today. It's a beautiful picture. Can you... Tell me something you see in the picture. You see a cross. Raiden, what do you see? Okay. How many hearts do you see? One. This one in the middle, this little one. You see the big one around the outside too? Yeah, there's two hearts there. What's this yellow thing down here? Yeah, a hand. That's right, a water drop. The cross and the water drop and two hearts and a hand. Yeah, this is our logo for today for LWML Sunday, and it says our hearts in his hand. And that means that our lives are in God's hand. Do you, do you guys have a heart? Yeah. yeah, where is it? Where do you think it is about? Yeah, right in here, right? Yeah. What does our heart do? Pumps blood, that's right. It gives us life, right? Pumps that blood around our body. Yeah. Well, have you ever heard someone say that someone has a sad heart or a glad heart? Yeah. Sometimes we talk about the way that we're feeling by the way of our heart. Well, I like that when we talk about having a glad heart because as we are God's children, we have glad hearts in him. And so there's a wonderful hymn that we sang last week, and it's a simple hymn. And it's called, I am Jesus' little lamb. And the word, first words say, I am Jesus' little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. So it talks about having a glad heart in Jesus. Now, are you guys, it says, I am Jesus' little lamb. Are you guys lambs? No. <laughs> you might act like one sometimes, right, Dave? But no, we're not lambs. But you know what? Scripture talks about us being lambs, and it talks about Jesus taking care of us. And do you guys know what Jesus is called? If we're called lambs, do you know what Jesus is called? You know, David? A shepherd, yeah, the good shepherd. Hold on just a second, buddy. The good shepherd, yeah. And because sheep on their own, they, they're not too smart sometimes. They need someone to guide them to the good food and water and need to protect them from danger. Well, that's why we're called sheep, because Jesus does that for us. He provides for us through our, our parents and grandparents and people who, who provide us food and clothes and all those good things. But Jesus provides us with the most special gifts of forgiveness and life in him. And so we are his little lambs. And that's the joy today I'm going to be talking about in my sermon, the heart of uh, Jesus and our hearts and the way that he holds us in his hand, like the picture says there. So we're going to be talking some more about this, this logo and these words in my sermon today, so you guys can listen for that. But I want to read you the whole first verse of this song. I am Jesus' little lamb, ever glad at heart I am. For my shepherd gently guides me, knows my need and well provides me, loves me every day the same, even calls me by my name. And that is awesome good news that Jesus calls us and loves us and calls us by name. I think we should thank him for that. So can you guys put one hand in the other? And church family, you're welcome to join in. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your gift of your son Jesus. Give us each day a clean heart, a pure heart, as we live as your children. Thank you, Jesus. 
In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks, you guys. As you head back to your seats, we're going to join together in our sermon song today. We sing together. Much grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our text for the message today, 1 Peter chapter 1, specifically verse 22, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. This is our text this morning. When we think of God's gift to the church, especially the people who serve as leaders in the church, both past and present. For me, I'm reminded of uh, Dr. Dale Meyer. Some of you may know him. Dr. Meyer was the past president at Concordia Seminary in St. Louis. He served there for 15 years, but he retired in 2020 as the seminary president and professor there on campus as well. Some of you may have heard him over the years as the speaker on the Lutheran Hour or seen the television show that uh, he hosted called On Main Street that talked about the simple things of God in our everyday lives. 
Dr. Meyer is an author and uh, has written books and articles and has been speaking and preaching for almost 40 years. Wonderful wife, Diane, two grown daughters and five grandkids. I personally was blessed to have Dr. Meyer as a homiletics professor, fancy word for sermon preaching class, uh, for a couple of my classes. And so when I think of the gifts in the church and the people in the church that are gifts, I think of Dr. Meyer as certainly one among those that I remember. Well, Dr. Meyer is blessing us today as well as he shares with us thoughts on 1 Peter and on this text this morning, certainly guides the words of the sermon this morning. Uh, Dr. Meyer asked a question that I thought was a good one for us to consider today. He said, what motivated you to come to church today? That's a great question. What motivated you to come to church today? I'm sure you've driven around town and on the signboard out front of the church, it says, visitors welcome. But how easy is it to just read that sign and walk into a place that you don't know anybody or anything about it? Maybe that's what brought you to Lutheran Church of the Savior in the past, or maybe that's brought you here this morning as you're visiting here at LCS today. But it's not always easy if you're just coming in out of the blue. But what if there was someone you knew and respected, someone who showed in their words and actions in their lives that they had a heart for others, and they invited you to come to their church? That might feel a little different, right? You might be open to that invitation. You might be open to going into that church. You might be open to a a spiritual conversation with that individual. So again, I ask, what motivated you to come to church today? Well, I think part of that answer for those who who maybe have been here a long time or, or maybe even if you are visiting for the first time today, part of that answer is the people. Right, A desire to be in in fellowship with one another, to share in worship together as the Lord feeds us with his gifts. What a joy it is to be with the people of God. Well, today we are celebrating LWML Sunday. That stands for Lutheran Women's Missionary League. And if you're not familiar with the LWML, it's an auxiliary, an organization of our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and It has members throughout North America. And you hear in the name the word missionary. And that means something. Because as a missionary organization, they sponsor mission efforts that reach into the local communities and around the world. And they do that each year by collecting mites. See these little boxes? Uh, Anyone have one or two or three or five around your house, in your car, uh, wherever, by by the washing machine for the change that comes out? We collect the mites in these mite boxes, and on the end it says, serve the Lord with gladness. We serve the Lord by collecting those mites and and taking them out to fund these mission projects all around the world, these mission projects that show and share the good news of Jesus Christ and his forgiveness and love with others. That love of Christ is something we're encouraged to share, and it's expressed in our theme verse today from 1 Peter. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. (laughs) Love one another earnestly. Well, as we think about loving others, I think about the saying that a picture is worth a thousand words. So uh, if you look at the bulletin that you have in front of you today, on the cover there is the logo. It should be uh, posted online as well uh, the, in the bulletin in the feed there. Uh, the logo that we look at there is for Elder Mel Sunday, and it says our hearts in his hands. I was talking about it with the children a few minutes ago. Think about for a minute a heart in your hand. Literally, think about a human heart in your human hand. That's what a transplant surgeon does, right? He holds a heart in his hand. He takes out the diseased heart with his hand and he puts in a new heart with his hand. Well, that's what God has done for you and me as well. You see the cross on that logo and the drop of water on that logo? Somebody asked me after early service today, they said, well, isn't it a drop of blood? And I said, well, yeah, it could be a drop of blood as we remember Christ's sacrifice. But here it's a drop of water. 
The cross, of course, represents Jesus dying and rising for us for the forgiveness of our sins. That drop of water represents baptism. Baptism is where we receive a new heart, a pure heart, with all the benefits of Christ's death and resurrection. In our Old Testament lesson today, the prophet Ezekiel proclaimed the word of the Lord and the Lord saying this, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. That's a promise that God made and that's a promise that he's kept and he's done in our lives. Unlike a physical transplant that will last for a certain period of time, the new heart that God gives through the gift of holy baptism is eternal. It will live forever. And so we might ask the question, though, why in the world would God want to give us this transplant? Why would he create in us a clean heart? Well, here's why. Our hearts are not clean. You and I have in our hearts thoughts and feelings and ideas and urges that are all too often sinful. They don't live up to God's expectations. And if these things that are deep down in our hearts and our gut ever came out for others to see, boy, we'd be ashamed, wouldn't we? My heart by nature is not pure and clean, and neither is yours. We're born with original sin, sin inherited from those who were sinners before us, all the way back to Adam and Eve. And then daily in our lives, we continue to commit sin, no matter how hard we try to live up to the expectations of God in our thoughts, words, and deeds, as we confessed at the beginning of the service today, we do sin, and we need that gift of forgiveness. God says this, no creature is hidden from his sight, that is God's sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. The sin in us is known to God. Original sin, the actual sin that we commit daily, even as we live each day forgiven in Christ, we continue to sin. Thank goodness, right? We thank and praise God for the forgiveness that's ours in him. Because it's not until the day of our death that we will quit sinning. And with that reality in our lives, we're grateful for the gift of baptism. That baptism that brings us the forgiveness of Christ Jesus right here, right now. And it gives us the grace to live new and holy lives right here and right now. St. Paul says we were buried with Christ by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Romans chapter 6. St. Peter describes this, this baptism and this drowning and this raising up again as a new birth. He says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Baptism is your daily death and your new birth each and every day, drowned and raised up to new life. When a surgeon takes that heart in his hand and performs a transplant on a fatally ill person, new life comes to them. God has given you a new heart, a pure heart, and the newness of life, life that God gives, love that God gives. His love. So thinking about that pure heart and that love of God, we read the theme verse again today. Having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love, love one another earnestly from a pure heart. The pure heart that God's given you, that's where we love one another from. Now, if you just focus on the first part of that verse having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, it sounds like you've made yourself pure by, by carrying out the commandments perfectly. But we haven't done that. That's not what Peter is talking about here. Peter is simply talking about faith. Peter is writing to us, inspired by the Holy Spirit, telling us about our new heart, our new birth that makes us children of the Heavenly Father, children who trustingly look to God and desire to live holy lives for him. You see, being pure before God is not our doing. It's all by grace. 
Paul writes to the Ephesians about this, chapter 2, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. What a wonderful gift we have. And when Peter says that faith is for a sincere brotherly love, please know he's not excluding women here. In the New Testament, that word brother often means both men and women, those who believe in Jesus Christ. We could kind of say it this way when we're talking about this love. Now that the cross of Jesus has come into your hearts through baptism, love one another. And that's what's depicted in the logo if you look at it one more time. You see the cross. The cross comes through baptism, through the water, into your heart. And each new purified heart is surrounded on the picture by a a larger heart. Raiden showed us that there's a small heart and there's a larger heart as well. There's two. That bigger heart is the church, a place where we as the church are being held in the hand of God, and you see that in the logo as well. That's what the church is, a big-hearted place filled with the love of Christ. I started the sermon and asked you to consider the question, what motivates you to come to church? Part of that answer, as I said, is the people. That's you. It's all of us together. I think we've been clearly acute and and know that very well in this time of the pandemic, right? Many of you have returned here to God's house and said, boy, I missed being in God's house. I missed being together with God's people. God has promised he'd be here with us, and that's why we gather here in this place gather around the word and the sacraments for us. This is why we come together and worship. Together with one another, God gives us his word. His word of new birth and new life and love in Christ. Together we receive the living and active word that transforms our hearts and minds as as it's spoken, as it's sung, as we receive it physically in baptism and in the Lord's Supper. Together we come because here all our hearts are together together. Not only together with one another, but most importantly, together being held in the hand of God. When you think about it that way, there is something about worship that's different, isn't there? Different from maybe other groups or associations that you you go to and have part in throughout the week. Maybe you belong to an organization, maybe a service organization like the Kiwanis or the Rotary. Maybe... You belong to a veterans organization like the American Legion or the the veterans of foreign wars. Maybe you belong to a country club or a fitness club. Maybe you belong to an interest club at your school. Maybe you like just hanging out with friends in a group. That's well and good and blessings for us. But there's something different about being together here in this place. There's something different about rejoicing with the psalmist who said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. True joy to be together in God's house. Something unique and special about fellowshipping with brothers and sisters in Christ gathered as the baptized children of God to hear God's word, to receive his body and blood in the sacrament of the altar this morning. This is what's unique about our coming together each week in worship. It's here that God serves us as he comes through the means of grace to make a big-hearted fellowship filled with his love. This is how we love one another earnestly from a pure heart. That's a compelling reason we come and gather together to receive from the Lord. And that's exactly why we love those outside the church too. Those who don't know of Christ or maybe did know of Christ and have fallen away. We love one another. You see, Jesus isn't just content to hold in his hand those that are here now. But he reaches out with his hand to others as well. When a leper met Jesus and begged for his mercy and to be healed, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Mark chapter 1. When Jairus' daughter died, Jesus took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kumi, which means, little girl, I say to you, arise. And she did, and she had new life. 
Mark chapter 5, when Peter tried to walk on the water and he saw the wind and the waves and he was scared, what did Jesus do? He reached out to him immediately and pulled him up out of the water and into the boat. And we're told that Jesus gathered the little children to him, took them in his arms and blessed them and laid his hand on them. Today, the Lord reaches out his hand to you and to me. And he reaches out through you and me to others outside the church who don't know of his love yet. He uses us to reach out to people who are still spiritually dead with diseased hearts. He uses you and me to reach out to those who desperately need a new heart in Jesus Christ. You know, that's one of the reasons why we do gather with others in, in other organizations and groups. It gives us the opportunity to live Christian lives. It gives us the opportunity to share the love of Christ with them. It gives them an opportunity for us to say to them, come and see. Come and see who this Jesus is and learn and know of his forgiveness and love for you too. Come and see in the midst of your hurts and your joys, your challenges and your hardships. Come and see what hope looks like in Jesus who holds your heart in his hand. We have a new heart in Christ. And as we focus this morning on the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, so many women in this group that have a new heart in his hand as well. This auxiliary, this group has a, has a pledge that is part of their organization. That pledge reminds us of why we come to worship and why our hearts are in his hands. We experience that joy of Christ and we reach out to others. This motivates us. The gospel does to share with others. The, the entirety of the pledge goes like this. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, that's the motivation because of Christ, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. We dedicate ourselves to Christ. And in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest field, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Beautiful pledge of motivation and the joy of reaching out to others. Martin Luther, in his day, put it a little different, but he said it this way. Then what is a pure heart, Luther writes? What is meant by a pure heart is this, one that is watching and pondering what God says and replacing its ideas with the word of God. This alone is pure before God, yes, purity itself, which purifies everything that it includes and touches. Therefore, though a common laborer, a shoemaker, or a blacksmith, may be dirty and sooty, or may smell because he is covered with dirt and pitch. Still he may sit at home and say, my God has made me a man, has given me my house, wife, and child, and has commanded me to love them and to support them with my work. Note that he is pondering the word of God in his heart as he attains the highest purity so that he also takes hold of the gospel and believes in Christ. For without this, that purity is impossible then he is pure completely, inwardly in his heart toward God and outwardly toward everything under him on earth. I pray that these words of Luther describe each one of us, inwardly focused on the clean heart that God has given us, outwardly focused towards others and sharing that good news with them. Today, we thank and praise God for the members of the LWML Lutheran Women in Mission, we thank you for your example and your encouragement to share the forgiveness and love of Christ with one another and with all people. I hope that all of us gathered here today or those watching online will, will take that logo that's on the bulletin, take it home and look at it this week. And remind, be, may it be a reminder of the transformation that forgiveness has brought into your hearts and your lives through baptism through the love of Jesus, through his sacrifice to earn forgiveness and life for us. Coming together here in worship, God strengthens us to be a big-hearted church 
that extends his hand of love to all. We thank Jesus for his sacrifice and for the strength and the forgiveness and the life that we now have in him. To him be the glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace that passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As we strive to love one another, one of those loving things we do is bring our prayers and pray on the behalf of others and for ourselves. So I invite you to stand as we join together in the prayer of the church. Included in our prayers, along with those we've been praying for, we're going to add to our list today, uh, the grandmother of Matt Baker. Uh, she has uh, entered hospice. Her name is Lorraine, and so we'll be lifting up Lorraine in our prayers today, along with those uh, that we've been praying for, those who are in our hearts and minds this day. So let us join together in prayer. Almighty God, you search our hearts and have seen our sin, and yet in your love you reconcile us to yourself through your Son. Give us your spirit, the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, that our lives may grow in devotion to you for the salvation you have so graciously given us. Lord, in your mercy. Guide us, O Lord, we pray. Guide our church family in life and witness. Give us your grace so that in a land where strife is too common, we will be a place of peace. In our divided nation, make this your church family a gathering place of hearts, united in you, who extend your welcome to all. Inspire all the members of your church family to love this place where your name is invoked and your grace is proclaimed. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we place our hope in you and ask your blessing on our president and all in authority in our nation, that their plans would be ordered for the welfare of those who govern, and that you would execute your justice for the oppressed. Lead them in your wisdom and in your ways for the good of all people. Bless our military personnel who serve here and around the world to protect the freedoms that we enjoy. Grant protection and strength to them and their families, especially when they are separated through their service to our nation. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the daily bread that sustains us in life, for the food and health for housing and clothing, for employment, for moderate weather, for justice and peace in our community and nation, that in every time of abundance and time of need, we may know your peace in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, grant your presence and raise up those who are suffering or sick, especially Jeanette and Colleen and Lenore, Laureen and Fred and Sarah, John and Beth and Lorraine and Meta. Stuart and Bud and Annetta and Brigitta, Deb and Sally and Gary and Emily, Don and Jimmy and Joyce and Rick, Kevin and Sid, Ingo and Tim, Diana, Vera and Lindsay, Dick and Denise, Martha and Nick and Holly. Strengthen them all in their afflictions that Satan would have no foothold in their lives. Bring healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy. For the mission of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League, O oh Lord, we ask that you would bless them here in our church family and throughout the world, that every heart will beat with your love and all hearts extend your hand of service to others. Through the faithful gathering of mites, may Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us all to put all that you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may be seated as we sing together. Serve the Lord with gladness. <laughs> 